It's a beautiful day, boys and girls, Sunday morning, that I want to invite you uh, on this online children's service. Please, I want us to start by singing this song that reminds us how wonderful God is. You know, when you think about the wonder of God, it makes you marvel. Because if you look at yourself, you are a system by yourself. The way your mind works, the way your heart works, the way your digestive system works, the way your nerves system work, your, the way your blood system work, the way you, you, know, you move around your muscles. And it is only a wonderful God that can be able to make a person like you and a person like me. And I've told you before, there is no one who is like any other. Even twins don't look alike. Can you imagine? They, ha they have some differences of a kind. Because God is a wonderful God. When you look at how um, a gecko like, walks on the ceiling, how does it even do that? If you think about a snake going up a tree, how does it even do that? You know, if you think about how the earth hangs in the space, how does that even happen? God is a God of wonder. He's full of wonder. And so we're going to sing this song that reminds us that indeed God is a wonderful God. He's the one who made the mountains. He made the sea, the songs, birds. You know, he made the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the things that we see, and even other things that we don't see, like the air. A wonderful God. Indeed, he is. Let's sing this song together. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You made the mountains and you made the sea. You made the song by the fly over me. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You made the night time and you made the days. You made my tongue to keep singing this phrase. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You made all men are the broken your laws. You sent your son to redeem us because you are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. Cause us to tell your son's story and then look to the sky for his coming again, Jesus. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. And for sure, God is such a wonderful God. And you know, and the more you read his word, boys and girls, the more you read God's word, the more you get to know about him. Do you really want to know about this God? The only way you can know about this God is by reading his word. Let's sing this song together. Oh, the more we read the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Oh, the more we read the Bible, the wiser we'll be. It tells of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Oh, the more we read the Bible, the wiser we'll be. Oh, the more we hear of Jesus, of Jesus, of Jesus. Oh, the more we hear of Jesus, more precious is He. He bled and He died for us. He came back to life for us. Oh, the more we hear of Jesus, more precious is He. Oh, the more we tell the good news, the good news, the good news. Oh, the more we tell the good news, the more we'll believe. So you tell, and I'll tell, and they'll tell of Jesus. Oh, the more we tell the good news, the more we'll believe. Very true. We want to talk to this God. If you can put your hands together, please, and bow down your head and close your eyes as we talk to God in prayer. Shall we? Let's pray. Precious Father, thank you this morning. You've been with us for the ended week. 
he has at home, not doing so much, but you have watched over us and protected us. You have provided all that which we have needed. You have kept us safe. Heavenly Father, our children at home are doing all kinds of things. There are hard services, there are slippery grounds, there is electricity, there are hot stuff, there are choking elements, there is drowning waters, and all these things, you've kept them away from them, O oh God. You are the only one who can keep them safe. And we thank you for doing that this, this ended week. Um, Father, we thank you for their parents who on a daily basis are provided for by you. They leave the house in the morning, they come back in the evening and they are carrying bread because you provided it. Some of them are working at home and you have given them that energy to do that and we thank you. But we also, Father, want to remember those parents whose businesses have gone down because of the situations in the country and in the world today. We remember those parents who are struggling because they have lost their jobs. And Father, we are praying that you come in for them. You, pro you made a promise to your servant, David. And as he gave the testimony in his old age, he said he was old, he was young, and now he was old, but he had not seen a righteous forsaken of the Lord, or even his children begging for bread. And Father, I pray that regardless of the challenges of this life, as a result of COVID-19, none of these children who belong to your people are going to beg for bread because you're going to provide. We pray that money for paying bills, money for taking care of those children, including paying their school fees and other needs will be provided by you, O oh God. And so we thank you for what you're doing. We have been praying for Pastor Kegiri. We are happy to hear that you're working on his body. The last time we were praying, he was in the HDU, High Dependence Unit, but now he's in a general world, perhaps even awaiting to be discharged. We thank you. You are the only one who can touch him and make him well, O oh God. But we also want to thank you for the doctors and the nurses who are taking care of him. Thank you for the grace. And Father, we also want to uh, thank you for Mama Christopher, who on a daily basis takes care of pastor. Please encourage her and also bless her. We, uh, we've been asking you to encourage and to comfort those being left by the loved ones, and especially our brother James Kabi. We pray that your comfort will continue to be with him and his family, and even his siblings and his extended family. We have just received news of uh, Mrs. Waidanje's son uh, who has passed on uh, uh, and he burnt in the house. We don't even have details of what happened. By heaven and the Father, we are praying for Mrs. Waidanje right now, the mother and her children, that gracious Lord, you shall offer your comfort and encouragement this time, O oh God. We pray that you be close to them and that your strength will be upon them, O oh God. And so, Father, as we start, this morning we pray for a boy who is unwell or a girl who is unwell. Those, those boys and uh, girls who are in Kenya and those who are even outside, the, outside Kenya, wherever they are watching us from, we pray that you reach out your blessings to each one of them because we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, boys and girls. You know, we sing this song that says, 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You know, we have one God I've told you before. But this one God is in three persons. There is God the Father. And in God the Father, there is God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. There is God the Son. And in God the Son, there is God the Father and the God the Holy Spirit. And boys and girls, there is God the Holy Spirit. And in God the Holy Spirit, there is God the Father and there is God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. They are inseparable. You know, uh, actually, the word that we use is their equal in essence. That means you cannot separate God the Father from God the Son. Neither can you separate God the Son from God the Father. That's how it works. But each one of them have got their assignment. God the Father is the one who sent God the Son. God the Son is the one who died on the cross because of your sins and my sins. When God the Son left, he sent God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit is the one who keeps us. He is the one who encourages us. He is the one who comforts us. He is the one who strengthens us. He is the one who counsels with us. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. I was going to be talking about not uh, 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 in a moment. So let's sing this song together. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. God the Father loves me so, gave his word so I would know. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. Three in one and one in three. God the Son, he died for me. For my sins his blood he gave, then he rose up from the grave, three in one and one in three. God the Son, he died for me, three in one and one in three. God the Spirit lives in me, day by day and hour by hour, helps me witness by his power, three in one and one in three. God the Spirit lives in me. Now, boys and girls, I would want you to open your Bibles in the book of First Corinthians. The book of First Corinthians. The book of First Corinthians is in the New Testament. It's way back, like after Romans, you go to First Corinthians. You know? And by the way, another way you can be able to find out where your where the book you're looking for is, is going at the beginning of the Bible, and you find somewhere written contents, boys and girls. And if you see that, you see uh, is written the Old Testament. Those are the book of the old, the books of the Old Testament, and down there also is written the books of the New Testament. And then using your pointing finger, you can scroll through the page, and find out the book we are calling. First Corinthians, yeah? And then according to your Bible, look uh, uh, on the right side and find out which page it is. And then you can be able to find it easily, okay? But this time, if you're able to find it quickly, we are in First Corinthians, big numbers 15. First Corinthians, big numbers. Number 15. And we are going to do verse 3 and verse 4, boys and girls. First Corinthians... Big numbers 15, 3 and 4. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Boys and girls, this is the word of God. It is written or given to us that this morning we can listen and hear what God is telling us. And in verse 3 it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Now who is this man? Who is this talking? This is Apostle Paul. And if you want to know about Apostle Paul and his encounter with Christ, before he became Apostle Paul, he was Saul. Actually, he was a persecutor. He's the one who was fighting the church of Jesus Christ, even killing 
their apostles. The Bible records that when Stephen was being killed, being stoned, the people who were stoning Stephen had put their clothes at the feet of this man Saul. And so when he's talking about what he received, he's talking about receiving revelation or receiving the word of God straight from Jesus Christ. And he says, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. We've been talking about how Jesus died. And I walked with you through the scriptures, the journey, all the way from, you know, him coming to Jerusalem and people celebrating him and singing Hosanna to the point where they turned against him and said, release Barabbas and put Jesus Christ on the cross. It could have sounded unfair, boys and girls, but this was God's plan. It was God putting things in place that his son will finally end up on the cross. And the Bible records he died on that cross because of your sins and because of my sins. You and I are not right before God. In fact, even the good that you have, because sometimes you may think, I haven't done anything bad. Even that good that you have, the Bible calls it filthy rags. And we deserve, you deserve, I deserve to be punished because of our sins. But instead, Jesus took our place. The Bible records. Verse 4 says, and that he was buried. Why was he buried? He was buried because he was dead. And that is key. That's very important. That Jesus Christ was buried. You don't bury someone who is living. You only bury the dead. He was buried because he had died. And then it says, And that he rose again on the third day. But even though Jesus Christ was buried, on the third day, the Bible says, he came back to life. And they tried to make all kinds of stories to make it look like he didn't rise up. But listen, boys and girls, on the third day, the scriptures record, Jesus Christ rose again from the grave. And his grave today is empty. It is empty because Christ is not now. He is risen, just like he said. I mean, Matthew 28 and verse number 6. So, um, if Jesus Christ is your Savior, this is a truth that you need to believe in, that Christ is no longer dead. He is alive, never to die again. But maybe you're there and Jesus Christ is not your Savior. Did you know that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures because of your sins? And the penalty that you deserved, the punishment that you deserved, was put on him. So that if you look up to him and believe in him, then your sins will be taken away. If you haven't believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have no excuse. You have no reason to wait. Because Jesus has done everything for you. And all you need to do is to believe in him. And the Bible says you'll be saved. Okay? So we'll do this verse just twice. Okay? It's a long verse, but we'll do it's a long verse, but we'll do it twice. Eh? First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. One more time, boys and girls. Let's go together. 1 Corinthians 15, 
3 and 4. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again, according to, on the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Now, the last time, okay, together, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Boys and girls, who needs to know about Jesus Christ? Let's sing this song together as we prepare to hear from God's word. Who needs to know about Jesus? Who needs to know God the Son? God says that no one should perish. He wants to save everyone. Go with the gospel. God helps you know what to say. Your neighbors need to know Jesus. Go with the gospel today. We want to pray and hear from God's word. But just before we hear from God's word, I want you to open your Bibles in the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 2. Okay, we'll, we'll move from chapter 1, chapter 2 there. But I'll, I'll let you know uh, when, we, when we are reading. We are going to be doing Acts chapter number 2, verse 1 to 41. You can read at your own time the whole of it. But we're also going to touch on Acts chapter number 1. And we'll do verse 3. We we'll also read verse 8 and verse 4. So we are going to be moving around those scriptures, okay? So open your Bibles in the book of uh, Acts chapter number 2. Are you there? Acts is after John, boys and girls. Okay? It's the fifth book of the New Testament. Are you there? Big numbers 2. Acts, big numbers 2. Verse 1 to 41. Let's pray and then hear from God's word. Heavenly Father, we have opened your word in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse 1 through 41. Please, as we look through your word, we are asking you to speak to us, even as we listen to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, if Jesus Christ is your Savior, God wants you to be a witness for Jesus. You can be a witness for Jesus. A witness is someone who tells you what they know. And if Jesus Christ has come into your heart, there is something you know about Jesus. And Jesus does not want you to be quiet about it. He wants you to tell it to that other person. Now, you know, when Jesus left and went to heaven, if you remember last Sunday, we left Jesus in the sky. He just disappeared. And two angels appeared and ask the disciples, what are you doing here? <clears throat> the same Jesus who went up, he will come again. And so after that, the disciples left. And they had been given instructions. They were told, go and stay in Jerusalem until a helper is going to come. Now, this helper who was going to come was Jesus Christ. Have you ever been waiting for something? Or someone. Maybe your aunt had promised was going to come and visit. How does it feel to keep waiting? You hear a knock on the door and you're thinking, she's come. You know? And that's how the disciples were. Day one, day two, day three, they kept indoors. They were there waiting. Even as they remembered their life with Jesus Christ. Remember they had walked with him for three good years. And Jesus Christ had taught them so many things. And even as he left to heaven, he had made a, 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 a promise to them. And not only a promise, he had also made a command to them. Maybe you can open uh, with me in the book of Acts chapter number 1. And look at verse 8. It says, But ye shall receive power. That's a promise. Ye shall receive power power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto, 
and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus had told his disciples, you shall receive power. That was a promise. What was this power they were going to receive? Not the physical strength, no. They were going to receive power on the inside. And that power was to enable them witness for Jesus. Tell others about Jesus Christ. So two things Jesus had promised. Number one, he had promised power. And number two, he had made a command. Because he had said, once you receive that power then, you shall be witnesses unto me. That was a command. You receive power, then you go out and witness for me. And so, they were there thinking about Jesus, their time with him. What he had prom- By the way, they had walked with Jesus for about 40 days after he rose from the grave. You know, they had interacted with him. He had prepared them to be his disciples. And all they are waiting for now is that promise of God. And the Bible says they were in Jerusalem, locked up in a room. And all this time, they were seeking the face of God in prayer. They were always in prayer. And boys and girls, prayer is something special. You know, talking to God. God always wants to hear us talk to him. And there are so many things you can tell God. You can tell God what you feel, how you feel. You can tell God what you, what you need. You can tell God when you're happy. You know, there are all kinds of things. You can talk to God about any time, any place, about anything. You know, God encourages us to talk to him. And the disciples are not an exception. They were there, and all the time, they were talking to God. And the Bible says, in chapter 1 of Acts, verse 3 and 4, um... Let's do verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they, sh- they, sh- they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, he hath heard of me. Now the promise that Jesus was saying was the promise of the Holy Spirit. And boys and girls, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity of God. God is triune. God is trinity. God is one, but in three persons. And one of the persons of God, the head, is God the Holy Spirit. And that is the helper they were waiting. Another name for the Holy Spirit, actually, is the helper. You know, sometimes when you think of all the book of Acts, it is very easy to think about the miracles that happen in the book of Acts. Sometimes it's easy to think about even Paul or even think about Peter. But actually, if you look at the book of Acts closely, you realize it is the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit that dominates or that stands out. Why? Because he is the one who is seen working through the apostles in the word of God, boys and girls. The work of the Holy Spirit. Number one is to help you understand the word of God. You know, without the Holy Spirit, you will not understand the word of God. Boys and girls, the work of the Holy Spirit is to help you obey God. Not not just obeying God, but also become more like his son, Jesus Christ. We cannot even be able to obey God unless the Holy Spirit helps us to obey God. And number three, the work of the Holy Spirit is to give you courage to tell about Jesus Christ. And you know what? When you are sad, he comforts you. So number one, the work of the Holy Spirit is to help help you understand the word of God. Number two, to obey God and to become more like Jesus Christ. And number three, to be a witness for Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is your Savior, you can be a witness for the Lord Jesus. And so, that is exactly what the disciples were waiting for. And ten days after Jesus Christ had left, it was a Pentecostal time, time when all kind of Jews will come to Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover. They will come from all kind of countries. Many people will come because Jerusalem was 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 a big city. 
it was a business city and many people would gather there to do all kind of businesses. And the Bible says, as people gathered for the Passover and the disciples were busy waiting for the, Lord, for, 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 for the gift that the Lord Jesus Christ had promised, and all of a sudden, there was like a wind, a mighty wind moving in the room. It was locked up room. And the Bible records something that looked like tongues of fire rested on each person's head. And, and you know, look at, look at chapter number 2, verse 1 to 4. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was full come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterances. And the boy, boys and girls, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit came, the apostles, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they began to speak in new tongues. Wow. Can you imagine like speaking in a tongue that you've never spoken in? Like for example, you find yourself speaking in German. Or maybe you find yourself speaking, if you're Kikuyu, you're speaking in Luo. Or maybe if you're uh, um, Akamba, you're speaking in, uh, in, in Kidigo. Or you're speaking in... Um, 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 Kitaita. You know, they were speaking in tongues that they had not even spoken of or even learned. Why? Because the Holy Spirit enabled them. And boys and girls, many people came together and find out why are these people speaking this way. Actually, they said, are these people not Galileans? How comes we can hear them? in our own language. And I want to make that very clear, boys and girls, because it's important. You know, the disciples were not just uttering funny things that were not understood. They were speaking in tongues of men. Tongues that men who were there in Jerusalem could say, we can hear them in our own mother tongues. It was, you know, it was not something barbarish. It was something that was understood boys and girls and peter got a chance and he began to preach christ to them and he said man this is all about jesus christ and he spoke how jesus christ came how he loved you how you put him on the cross and how he died and how he rose on the third day and peter continued speaking about Jesus Christ. And people are there listening. And remember, it is not even long ago after Jesus had left. So some of them maybe even knew Jesus Christ. All they have heard about him. And all of them were listening. And they were listening. Boys and girls, the Holy Spirit enabled the apostles, the disciples of Jesus Christ to be witnesses for him. Do you know you can be a witness for Jesus Christ? Yes, you can. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can be a witness for Jesus. Maybe you are shy and you're thinking, Peter, I'm shy. How do, I even, how do I even start? You can start from the people that you know. Maybe your family members. It could be your dad. Maybe your dad does not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe your mom does not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe your brother or your sister don't know. You can start from your cousin, the people that you know, your grandma, the people that you know. And you're asking me, what do I tell them? Boys and girls, sometimes even me, I'm not very sure about what I'm going to say. But the Holy Spirit, the third person of God, he helps me. He can help you as well. Witness for him. And boys and girls, you can even begin by this verse that we have just learned today. You know, 
1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. You can begin by telling someone about it and saying Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures. He rose on the third day according to the scriptures. Why did he die? He died because of your sins. You can begin by even showing them this verse. Yes, you can. So boys and girls, you don't really have to worry what to say. When you go there, the Holy Spirit will help you what to say. So don't say, I don't even know what to say. God will put words in your mouth. So Peter continued preaching and preaching about Jesus Christ. Guess what, boys and girls? As Peter was preaching, the Bible says, when they heard the word of God, they were like pricked, you know. They were like being poked. It's like God was just touching their hearts. And they asked a very important question. Maybe this is the most important question that has ever, ever been asked in the whole world or in, 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 in the world history. Look at uh, Acts chapter number 2 and verse 14. Not verse 14, but verse, let me see. Let's do from verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, uh, sorry boys and girls, let's do verse 37. They have heard Peter speaking, they have heard the word of God, now here comes the question. A very important question that each one of us need to ask or any other person need to ask. The greatest question that has ever been asked in human history. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostle, men and brethren, what shall we do? Wow. What a beautiful question. And boys and girls, that is a wonderful question. Now that you have heard the word of God, what must you do? And Peter knew this is the moment. And the Bible says in verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That was a message. You know what? When they had that answer, the Bible records in verse 41 that on that day, 3,000, can you imagine? Even your school population is not that big. 3,000, if you're in Thickerwood Christian school, it means all the children in Thickerwood Christian school times three. More than 3,000 people believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ergo, wow. Peter had preached Jesus Christ. Died, crucified, buried, came back to life. And that day, the response was, what must we do? And Peter said, believe on Jesus Christ and I will be saved. Boys and girls, if Jesus Christ is your savior, God wants you to be a witness for Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is one who enables you to understand the word of God. And not just understand the word of God, but also obey and become more like Jesus. And then witness Jesus Christ. We don't, we, we don't witness. We don't even, I don't even teach you by my own power. He is the one who helps me, enables me. And this morning, if Jesus Christ is your savior, would you think of someone, as I count one, two, three, would you think of someone that you'd want to tell about Jesus Christ? Just think about someone. Someone may be close to you who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Savior, and you're saying, Teacher Peter, this is a person I would want to tell about Jesus. I'm counting one, two, and three, and then you think about that person. Are you thinking? 
One, two, three. Who came in your mind? Please, if you have a pen, write down that person's name. That is the person you're going to tell about Jesus this week. Even if you're not living with them, ask your mom or your dad to give you their phone. And then you can call them. Either call them or even text them. And tell them about this verse that we have just learned today. That Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures because of their sins. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And if you do that, God will bless you. But if you are there and Jesus Christ is not your savior, are you asking me, just like the people asked Peter, what must I do? Please ask me that question. If that is the question you've just asked me, then I will answer you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is all what you need. And you can do that even all by yourself. Let's pray together. But before we pray, please let's sing this song together very fast. And that reminds us that we need to be a witness for Jesus from Mombasa to Kinshasa, throughout the world. From Mombasa to Kinshasa, from New York to Mexico, from Samoa to Baboa, from Iraq to Jericho, from Savannah to Havana, from Quebec to Tibuktu, we must tell all the children of the world. We must tell them more of Jesus. We must tell them more of Jesus. We must tell them more of Jesus. We must tell all the children of the world. If Jesus Christ is your savior, you can be a witness for Jesus this week. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The that person, God the head. The Holy Spirit who helps us to understand the word of God. The Holy Spirit who helps us to obey the word of God and to be more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit who helps us to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Some of the boys and girls who are watching right now are shy. Please give them courage to start with the people who are close to them. Some of them are thinking, I don't know what to say. Please remind them of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4. And then encourage them to be a witness for you this week. Even as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you boys and girls and see you again on the coming Sunday.